What's up everybody, Swillow here, and today I'm going to be bringing you a skill guide. I'm going to talk about various skills that are really effective and show you some different builds that I use. And first off, I want to just give a big shout out to one of my viewers, Joshua. He made a spreadsheet that has all of the damage modifiers on the skills. I'm going to link that below down in the description, so check that out if you want to see how the math on everything works. But I'll kind of go over some of those modifiers throughout this video. So first off, uh, let me talk about some skills. Right now I have uh, six skills already equipped and these are six really strong skills that I'm going to go over before I start talking about some of the other skills. So first off we have Cheat Death. Cheat Death is one of the best skills you can have in terms of offense because uh, the way it works is as you get lower health you're going to get higher attack power and the modifier when you are at 5% health becomes times 5 which is extremely high it's much higher than any other attack modifying skill you can get in the game and then even when you're at full health you're still getting a 1.2 damage modifier which is even on par with some other damage modifier skills so this is just pretty much a mandatory skill in terms of dealing damage and then the next skill we have is undying which is the defense equivalent to cheat death so as you get lower on health, you're going to get more defense. And if you combine both Cheat Death and Undying, you get a situation where you're able to play more safely at low health because you're getting boosted defense on top of boosted offense. And that's kind of how you want to play. Like you want to maybe not take hits intentionally, but not be so worried about taking hits. And you want to try to avoid healing. Even if you don't get down to like low, low health and the red, even just staying at middle health will still give you like a decent damage modifier. So this becomes like a really powerful combination of giving you a lot of attack power and a lot of defense power simultaneously. Next up we have two more skills that are very mandatory in a lot of cases. And this is full force burst enhancement, which increases attack when using full force burst. And then you have resilience, which increases the duration of full force burst. So these two skills are really strong. Uh, full force burst is pretty much mandatory I feel like you want to be in it more than not so resilience is important so that you can stay in it longer and full force burst enhancement will give you a 1.3 damage modifier which stacks on top of the 1.3 damage modifier that you already get built in from going into full force burst so this becomes like just a strong all-purpose damage enhancement skill uh, next up we have Airborne Adept. Airborne Adept is a pretty strong skill as it allows you to deal additional damage against enemies in the air. And it has a higher modifier than some other options. It has a 1.3 modifier, which is better than like, let's say the square or the T modifier, the square or triangle modifier. So this is a decent modifier as you're going to do a lot of air juggling in this game, but there are some exceptions like Katakuri for instance may keep enemies more on the ground in some cases or if you're fighting giants you can't juggle them of course. So Airborne Adept is pretty strong for its damage modifier, but um, if you realize it's a situation where you may not have enemies airborne or you're playing as a character that may keep enemies more grounded, you know Another good character like that is like Kuzan. Kuzan freezes enemies and keeps them on the ground a lot, so Airborne Adept may not be like the greatest for him. But this is definitely like a strong skill for when you can use it. Then we have Hidden Resolve. Now Hidden Resolve is more important for some characters than others, but it's especially important for Sky Types, I will say. Now what this does is it's going to restore stamina when you use an R1 move. So anytime you use an R1 move you're going to get like a chunk of your stamina back and when used effectively this gives you pretty much infinite stamina. So this is really strong in ensuring that you can have the stamina you need to maintain a constant offensive pressure as well as movement. Like I said for sky types this is super important. I use this in almost all my sky type builds. So this is such a good skill. It's like a quality of life skill pretty much. So next let's go over some other skills that are really strong. Uh, next we have our we have our grinding skills here, right? Increase the number of berries you get, increase the number of crew points, increase the number of coins. When you're grinding, these are all good skills to bring. Um, I think berries is the least important, but if you really need money, then try to fit it in. But Usually I like to try to fit crew points in and coins in as these are two more valuable resources. 
And eventually when you max out crew points, you can just get rid of that altogether and you could probably put Cat Burglar instead. Uh, then next up we have the square and the triangle attack enhancement. Now these are not like super strong modifiers. However, there are some in instances where these can actually be good. Like if you just find yourself in a situation where you don't really have a better option to choose from, or let's say maybe you want to play without undying. If you feel like you don't really need undying, you could try to fit one of these in. So these are going to give you a 1.15 damage modifier. And it can be really decent for certain characters. Like let's say Luffy, this Luffy when he goes into Snake Man, uh, this square attack enhancement can be really strong for him because his square strings are so long. Uh, Carrot is another character that's going to use a lot of squares. Basically speed type characters in general will use a lot of square attacks. So this square attack enhancement can actually be decent for them even though it's not a huge modifier. Due to the amount of square attacks they're going to use, this can actually pay off for them in the end. And then in the equivalent for triangle attacks, you know, like sky types can use a lot of triangle attacks. Um, some tech technique types can use a lot of triangle attacks. You know, it really depends character to character, but these can work if you're finding yourself in a situation where you just want a little more punch and you're playing a character that can really take advantage. Uh, we have tenacity here. This makes you less likely to flinch due to enemy attacks. Now, this can be pretty strong in some cases. Um, but it really just depends. You really got to think about the character you're playing. Um, if they don't have a lot of crowd control and they can get hit easily from different angles, maybe this is good for them. Or if they don't have good uh, guard breaking capabilities, this can be strong for them because there are some characters that kind of struggle a little bit to break guard compared to others. So they need this tenacity so they don't get knocked away easily. But this is definitely more of a skill that you want to bring in as a quality of life or like a last ditch. Now a lot of these two and three star skills are unfortunately not too good. The modifiers on them would be good. Like the modifiers on them are not terrible. However, since they're taking up two and three slots, the modifier tends to not be good enough to make up for losing all the slots. If you can make a build with six one slot skills, that's the ideal route to go. But you can definitely always play however you want. Like, I'm giving you ideas, but you can always play how you want, play how you feel comfortable. But definitely just know that, like, statistically, these two and three slot skills normally don't give back as much as they're taking. So, fit them in knowing that you just really want to use it. But it's kind of probably not going to be too optimal. Let's see what else we can find in here. Uh, we have power overwhelming, increased break gauge attack. I feel like this is not an important skill because it's not that hard to break armor. And this doesn't modify the breaking enough to make it be worth it, in my opinion. Uh, so we have this skill right here, lineage factor. Increase the duration of status effects inflicted on enemies. This is actually a really good skill for certain characters. Uh, one character I want to talk about is Katakuri. So Katakuri has his mochi binding, which when you bind an enemy, they cannot regenerate their armor at all and you basically can just combo them endlessly with this increased duration it's very possible to bind an enemy in mochi and just completely kill them before it wears off so this is this can be really strong for certain characters um carrot's another character that has a really good status effect that this is good for so this is actually a possible possibility for the character if they have a status effect that you can really abuse we have Way of the Great Pirate, increased attack against minor enemies. Now this isn't great in general, but there are some characters that kind of struggle with killing mobs. Um, Carrot is a character that can struggle with killing mobs that I've played as, and this actually becomes kind of important for her if you want to get S ranks on the higher ranks more easily, because she will definitely struggle to destroy mobs. She just doesn't have like enough crowd control movement, even though she's really strong against single targets, her crowd control is kind of subpar so this actually becomes a viable option for getting s ranks more easily for characters that are very linear like carrot so uh this makes enemies more vulnerable to status, effect status effects once again kind of like uh, lineage factor you can even combine both of these to just really lock enemies down in status effects if you want but it's probably overkill to do this 
I think having the duration increased is more important than being able to inflict it more easily because usually when you guard break an enemy they have like almost a 100% rate of being inflicted with a status effect so I think that it kind of depends on the status effect though because you know I'm thinking more in the lines of like Katakuri's Mochi binding but there might be characters that have status effects that are not necessarily important for comboing, but maybe they just trigger like a increased damage output or something. So this could be character situational and unfortunately I don't have a character I can really recommend this for. Critical attack. Increase how long enemies remain unconscious when knocked out. Now let me explain how unconscious works. Unconscious is when you remove all of the shields from a target and they go into the dizzy state. And if you've been playing, you'll notice that rarely happens because you'll normally kill enemies before that that happens. So this usually isn't a great option. However, it can be strong on ultra hard difficulty if you combine it with other unconscious modifiers, such as um, we have Hercule Herculean Strength, right? But like I said, this is a two, two slot skill. This is a big investment, but um, on ultra hard story mode, it can be kind of strong because you'll actually put the enemies unconscious because of how much health they have, but in general play, it's usually not important. Leadership makes enemy territories easier to capture. This skill's really, there's not a lot of point to this. I mean, you could maybe use it if you're doing some of those online multiplayer maps where you have to capture all the territory. This could actually probably be really effective for that if you want to like speed run those maps, but in general play, it's not very effective. Family Bond restores your life by a fixed amount when rescuing allies. Once again, this is just usually not good enough for what it is. And because of cheat death, you don't necessarily want to be actively restoring your health more than what you already find on the map itself. On land attack enhancement. So on land attack enhancement and uh, airborne attack enhancement actually have pretty they got a very weak on modifier from what I'm seeing actually. I was about to say they have a good modifier, but they only have a 1.15 modifier. So think about this. They take two slots, but they have the same damage modifier as the one slot square attack enhancement and triangle attack enhancement. So these actually just become kind of pointless. These skills just they take two skill they take two slots, they're situational, and the modifier is low. So usually not worth it. Special attack enhancement. Increase the attack of special attacks. Once again, the modifier is kind of low, but it's higher than the, the airborne and the on land. It's a 1.3 modifier, and it can be good in some cases. Like Carrot has really good specials. Uh, some characters do have really good specials. So if you can really like get a good special spam like setup going, this could be effective, but the two slots makes it very hefty. So Giant Killer here, I already talked about this a bit, but it gives a 1.3 modifier, and it can be good if you're on a giant heavy stage. That's a, that's a higher modifier than usual, but you have to think about the fact that if you spend half of the stage fighting non-giants or more, then you've been missing out on possible damage overall. Battle Instinct. Increase attack and special move gauge fill rate until any special move is full. Now this can actually be really good, but you have to be playing a character where you're going to literally be using their special moves as they get them. And I can use this on Carrot, like Carrot is a character where I will literally use her specials the second I get them, but for most characters this is just not going to be good enough, as it's just you're not going to use your specials when you get them or their, their specials are more situational. But if, the, if you have a character where you're going to be throwing out your specials constantly, this could be effective because you're going to get a damage modifier and you're also going to be filling your gauges quicker so that you can use them faster. Hidden Resolve. We already talked about this. We have this equipped. Doctor's Tactics restores life when using a special move. This can actually be really good. Like if you want to stay alive, this is a pretty decent skill for doing so because some characters just get an amazing, like um, they get their special skills back at an amazing rate to where you're going to be pretty much at full health constantly with this. 
Restore stamina when using a launching attack. This is really pointless in my opinion. You're gonna rarely use launching attacks in my opinion. Uh, launching attack enhancement. Increase the attack of launching attacks. Once again, you don't use launching attacks enough. The modifier on it's decent at 1.3, but you just don't use them enough. Flight of the Phoenix. Makes you temporarily invincible when initiating a launching attack. Once again, you don't use launching attacks enough, so this just is hard to justify that. Giant Fist. Increase the attack of smash attacks. Now, this can be decent, but it just really depends on the character. If you're a character that's using a lot of smashing attacks, this could potentially be decent as it gives a 1.3 modifier. But, you know, you could probably pick stuff that just applies to more moves in general than this. But I'm sure there's like a character or two, there's some characters out there that could really take advantage of this. Absolute Leader increases attack and defense when all territories are under allied control. I mean, this sounds good, but if you have all the territories under your control, then you're probably not really worried about needing more attack and defense, right? You're probably in a good situation. It's a, uh, I don't know, it's a skill that doesn't make sense. It's just adding insult to injury, pretty much. Emperor's Domain increase allied territory durability. This could be good in this in like the four player maps where you're trying to capture all the territory and you don't want it to get captured but just depends it really depends in most cases you're you don't have to worry about losing territory might of the great pirate temporarily increases attack after capturing a territory capturing territory doesn't happen enough for this to be important in my opinion but once again if you did use it it would be on the the four player capture territory maps captain's wisdom gradually restores special move gauges this can be decent, but the two slot is pricey and it fills at a very slow rate. I've definitely like watched it before and it's it's a slow fill. It usually doesn't make like a big difference if you're expecting it. Like if you expect the bars to like fill up at a noticeable pace, no, it fills up like pixel by pixel. So it can be really nice when you're like running from area to area and maybe you'll get all your specials full or partly full by the time you get to the next area, but the two slot skill makes it very pricey, so you have to use this um, only if you really kind of like what it's offering. Concentration. Make special move gauge fills e more easily. So this can be kind of nice, but from my experience, it just doesn't fill enough. Like, it doesn't fill noticeably faster, so I feel like I would rather take better options, but if you're playing a character where their special attacks are really important for them, uh, this can be viable. Energy Hormone. Increase the speed at which stamina is restored. I think this is kind of pointless. Um, there are so many other ways to efficiently manage stamina that this is sort of like... I don't know. This, There's no point for this. This is unnecessary. But there could be a character or two that can really take advantage of this, and I'm just not aware yet. But I think in most cases you have better stamina management options. Indomitable Spirit. Gradually restores life when using full force burst. So this skill isn't like great. It's not bad, but the two slots makes it kind of bad. If I wanted to, I could do something like this. I could put Indomitable Spirit and then I could um, put... What was it? Tenacity? No, not Tenacity. Um, Undying. So with this build, when I get at lower health, I'll be constantly like regenerating just a little bit of health so they can kind of help me play play at low health even more safely without restoring enough health to like take me out of my low health state so this this can be like a tanky setup right here this can be like a low health tanky setup but you know that's it just depends on what you want i usually prefer to bring some offensive options but if you want like if you want to play with cheat death and undying and have like a more tanky setup this could be a way to do it like a more tanky setup that isn't gonna actually like because as I was saying that um, you'll reach a point where you're just restoring your if you use other skills you're gonna restore your health to and this is gonna result in a situation where you're not able to maintain the low health perks. 
uh, Moonwalk. Make you invincible when using Power Dash or Sky Dash and increase stamina consumption by an amount proportionate, proportional to the skill level. So Moonwalk, it can be nice if you really want that invincibility. And the decreased stamina consumption is a nice bonus as well. So this is going to basically allow you to power dash more for the sake of defense. So you'll be power dashing for offense and defense. It's kind of nice as a quality of life skill. The two slots makes it hefty, but uh, this could definitely work into certain builds or playstyles. Uh, Deadly Cadence makes you temporarily invincible directly after using a special move. So this is kind of a cool skill. This is actually a cool quality of life skill that I think could be explored more. Um, this is going to allow you to use your special moves and go through attacks with invincibility frames. And this is like a, I think this is a skill that could be potentially strong at higher levels of play when players start to find out which attacks they can effectively go through. I think this actually has a lot of potential. It's hard to use and I don't see myself really using it right now. However, I do see it becoming a more viable skill as people get better at the game. Uh, Storm and Stress, decreased stamina consumption for speed types. This is redundant in my opinion. Speed types do not have to worry about stamina. Once they go into full force burst, that's it. They have essentially infinite stamina. This is unnecessary. I do not recommend this skill at all. The Bounty Hunter gives defeated enemies a small chance of dropping bags of berries. If you combine this with all of the other grinding skills, you can just run like a really awesome like grinding build. But um, like I said, berries are usually the least important thing to grind. You usually, you'll very rarely not have berries. But if you really just want to go all out and equip all these grinding skills, it works. Hero Strength increases attack for 3 seconds after a certain number of enemies defeated. This is actually a really strong skill if your characters have uh, good crowd control. Like Katakuri, the skill's great. Um, Giants, you know, Kaido, Big Mom, stuff like that, this is a great skill. Just depends on your crowd control. We have the defensive equivalent. I think this is unnecessary. Hero Strength is nice, but I don't think you really need a defense one. Uh, Undying's a better option. Blood Curdling Tactics increases break gauge attack for special moves. This is like, like I've said, breaking breaking the armor on enemies isn't like hard. So this skill just doesn't feel necessary, right? It just, it feels like overkill. It may work if you just really be like, really want to break armor. And it could be helpful against giants, but it's not like a, it's, you could definitely pick more practical stuff, stuff that has more constant value. But this could work if you're really trying to emphasize uh, breaking. Blood Curdling Blow, increased triangle break gauge attack. Now this skill, once again, it's like the previous skill, it's kind of unnecessary, it's kind of overkill. However, there are a couple of really, really strong, actually not even a couple, just one that I know of. So Carrot, when she charges her triangle attack, it becomes one of the single strongest moves in the game in terms of just like dealing tons of damage and uh, breaking armor. So if you combine this with that attack, like she can literally just mo she could destroy a giant's barrier almost in one go. Like it, it depends. There's some giants with stronger armors than other, but I've definitely seen this like full charge with this skill on. Um, it can deal very hefty shield damage, but I don't really feel like that's like a ideal playstyle. But if you want to try it out, and if you want to see if you can push it and maximize it to something effective, it's a potential. But Carrot's the only character I feel like gets a whole lot of value out of this, as she has one of the single strongest uh, triangle attacks in terms of break gauge. There's a couple other attacks up here. I think I talked about everything, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, we have Doctor's Wisdom, gradually restores life. This takes three slots, which is just crazy. Insanity. Uh, Herculean Strength, increased break gauge attack, as well as attack against unconscious enemies. Uh, like I said, uh, enemies don't go unconscious often. You usually kill them before they go unconscious, so this skill is not terribly practical. And the break gauge attack boost is 
you might as well just take one of the one slot skills that raise break gauge attack. So this is an unnecessary. It sounds strong, but the modifiers are not strong enough to justify the two slots it's taking. And that's pretty much it. Uh, let me actually show off one of my sky type builds real quick. I'm gonna go to Sanji. Uh, sky types. I feel I like to use a, a more unique build for them because they're very stamina heavy class or typing. So let me find my Sanji. Order. And okay, so on my Sanji, I run. Whoop. I'm not supposed to have that. This is supposed to be cheat death. Um, so we have cheat death. I have tenacity. Makes you less likely to flinch. Uh, Sanji doesn't have a lot of crowd control options, so I found myself flinching more often than I preferred with him. So I bring tenacity. But this is definitely something that can be changed. Aerial expert. Decrease stamina consumption while airborne. Uh, you're airborne as a sky type, so this becomes really strong in stamina management. Full force burst enhancement and resilience, we've already talked about these. You, you need these to get the most out of burst. Hidden resolve, restore stamina when using a special move. I, already, I talked about this as well. This is an amazing for stamina management. So this build right here is a really nice build for just allowing you to plow on non-stop offense and really like maximize the perks of sky types. And like I said, Tenacity is a skill that could definitely be changed. You could change Tenacity for Undying, you could change it for Airborne Adept, you could change it for anything you want really. I just like Tenacity because, you know, you're, you're less likely to flinch. And this isn't like trying to be like super optimal in damage, but this is, this is a great, this is a great kind of basis for Sky Types. Sky Types, Aerial Expert and Hidden Resolve are two skills that are very important for a sky type i think uh you could possibly just run only hidden resolve or only aerial expert if you want like if you if you don't get r1s fast enough then a hidden resolve may not be good enough for you but i feel like most sky types do so it can be strong but um this is kind of like the template that i use for my sky types and i just adjust skills as i see fit for a character or based on my preference so that's pretty much it. Uh, if you all have any questions, just let me know in the comments, and I hope this was helpful. And don't forget, check the description for uh, Joshua's, we call it statistic table for the skills. <laughs> all right, peace, everybody.